Oftentimes we don't see the effects of a seed. We really don't. We don't see that everything starts with a seed and that the heart is the one place that the enemy is always looking to permeate and to get into. That is vital to our walk with the Lord to be able to walk in love, amen? And I'm gonna start off with a scripture. Um, it's a scripture that Paul was giving to the Ephesians. It's Ephesians 3, 17 to 19. And it was a desire that he had for the children of God. And I also believe it was a foundation that he knew that we would have to have to be able to walk with him, to do his will, to share the love of Christ to others, and to be completely submitted to him, amen? And I remember also about 20 years ago, I don't know if I'm telling a secret or not, but this, was, this is a mama's story. About 20 years ago, she told me, because I don't know if Papa knows or not, but she told me that she prayed Ephesians 3, 17 to 20, every single day for 30 minutes for her husband. And I think it went into the years, right, Mama? You did it for years, yeah. To pray that word into his heart, amen? And that really blessed me when she told me that, and I did try. Um, I did not succeed to do it for years, but I did try to do that. Um, and I believe that this is an amazing foundation. If you want to pray for anybody, you know, that's close to you and they've come to Christ, these verses are crucial, like I said, to building a strong foundation. So let's just read them together. Amen. So 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of god hallelujah amen amen thank you lord jesus thank you lord Thank you for that word. And I just pray that as we've read it, that it will go deep into our hearts, take root as we build on the foundation of your love this month in Jesus' name. Amen. So to better understand the love of God, we're going to examine three key, three key things about love. But I'm only going to focus on one point tonight. So I guess as the month goes on, other ministers will look at the other points, but tonight we're going to focus on the heart. And we know that love is only of the heart. It can never be expressed with its fullness in your mouth. It always has to come from the heart. And you have to dig deep to find this love. It's not something cheap. I mean, we have different types of love. We have like, we have Eros love, which is romantic love. It's easy to say, I love you, I care about you. Romantic, you're beautiful, we have that. We have phileo love, which you see often, you know, it comes with your family, with your children, with your parents, close friends. Then we have agape love, which is God's love, the God type of love. Amen? So there's many things that you can, can be done without your heart in life, but it's God's love that reigns and is required for your heart. Amen? And I mean, Jude even tells us, right, in uh, Jude 1, 21, we start 20, he says, but you, beloved, 
building yourself up on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ under eternal life. If you read the whole of Jude too, which I do think is really, it's, it's a really good book to read because it talks about all the things that are coming at us even at this day that are going to challenge your love, that are going to try to take you astray, that are going to try to lead you off the path. Amen? So Paul also prays in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, verse 3 to 5. You pull that up. You're not there, but I'll read it. So second, for the sake of notes, it says, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about this love and how do we get this love? I'm sorry, what version? Did you ask me what version? My apologies. Um, that's probably the only one I did not write down the version. But I will look it up for you. In Jim, okay. Okay. So we're going we're gonna to look at Romans 5.5. 5. Because many, my, many people might be thinking, well, how am I going to love people that are hard to love? How am I going to show up in situations when it's re- going to require a sacrifice? when it's requiring me to do things that I don't really want to do. Amen? So we're going to look at Romans 5.5. 5. Because you have it. Once you've given your life to Christ and you've asked him to come into your heart, the Bible says that the love of God is released by the Holy Ghost into your heart much similar to salvation. Once you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you're saved. Well, that he's Lord. There's a, that part in there. But then it also says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So it doesn't just stop there because you have been saved. Yes, you've been saved by grace. But you have to walk out your salvation because everything's been given into your spirit. So you have to work it out, right? You have to allow the word of God to permeate through your spirit so that you are showing that you're saved. Many people say they're saved, but then, you know, you look at the fruits of their life. Are they going to go to heaven? If they believe Jesus is Lord, yeah. But are they going to enjoy salvation? That's another question. So let's look at Romans 5.5, 5, okay? It says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. So that settles the matter, doesn't it? We have it. We have the love of God in our hearts already. It's there. Well, then why are we struggling? Why are so many people having a hard time allowing that love to flow freely through them? Well, we're going to find out tonight. Amen? We are going to find out. Hallelujah. We're going to start off with Proverbs 4.23. AMPC version. I like this version. It's really good. So the state of your heart impacts the flow of love. It's the starting point for the flow of love. The soil on which love can flourish in our hearts. That's why it's so important to maintain, protect, and be vigilant concerning the state of your heart. So we pulled up this verse, yes. So keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. And above all that, you guard. I mean, said twice. (laughs) For out of it flows the springs of life. Other versions say issues of life. Amen? But I want to look at the word guard here. 
because we've mentioned it twice, which means it's very important, okay? So when you're guarding something, you're protecting it. You're standing in the way. You're not going back to try to pull out what you moved over and let go in. You're guarding so it does not go in. And I think that I always like to go back to parenting, um, probably because I was a parent. Um, I love everything about parenting. I wasn't the best parent when I, you know, I didn't get saved until much later. So there was a lot I didn't know. And then even when I got born again, I was learning, right? I was a disciple. I was learning as I was going along. But one thing I've come to realize is that we are custodians, let's say parents in here, of our children because they don't know how to guard their heart. They don't know how to protect their heart. And oftentimes, you know, I have an example. I'll use my own example, and then I'll use an example um, from the other day. So when my daughter was very, very young, um, she always wanted to give everything in our house away. Like everything, our food, if there was a need for people, she would take my stuff. Like she was always trying to give stuff away to people. She had a heart to give to people. And I would stop her. One, finances. <laughs> um, two, I just didn't think that it was necessary for her. I mean, in, different ideas, okay? Different ideologies I had. None of them lined up with the Word of God, okay? So I would stop her from doing what she wanted to do. And I, later on, I really look back to regret that because I didn't realize the impact I had on her in stunting the plans or the growth that God or the trajectory that God had for her. And oftentimes we don't see the effects of a seed. We really don't. We don't see that everything starts with a seed and that the heart is the one place that the enemy is always looking to permeate and to get into. Because, okay, so if he usually wants to stop the seed from going in. We know the parable, the parables. But if the seed enters, then he wants to corrupt the seed. He doesn't want that seed to flourish. And it's very interesting because I was talking to her the other day, and I said, remember, you know, we were talking about the, the word on Sunday and stuff. I said, remember when you used to have, want to do this, you know? And she said, yeah, I remember when that got crushed. And I said, when? And she said, well, I went to where I was working at McDonald's and um, I went out and bought hat and mittens for, I bought a, went to the, I took my paycheck and spent a lot of it on hat and mittens for the homeless people. And she said, I went and passed them out. And after I gave them away, I was driving away and I looked in my rear view mirror and I watched one of them throw them on the street and walk away. And she said to me, that was it for me. And I was like, wow, that was it for you. Just one time, that was it for you. But that really touched my heart actually, because it, it really helped me to reflect, you know, if I would have nurtured that part of her. One encounter, two encounters, five encounters would not have taken her off the path of where she was going. So the heart, it needs to be guarded. It needs to be protected. And the other thing about that is, you know, <laughs> depending on your personality, you, we don't know oftentimes when seeds are being sown. They can just be in talking, you know, just hanging out, 
It can be in a merry environment, and someone could say something, and it could just, and then before you know it, you're cultivating it because you're looking back. Oh, yeah. He said this. Oh, yeah. And now your eyes, you know, when you, you ever heard that saying, you know, when you're, there's, you're looking for a red car, but then you never see red cars, and all of a sudden all you see is red cars? It's the same type of thing. Like when the seed is in there, now you're going to start to see and be attracted to all the things that are going to build up that seed so that it can grow. So I pulled this a scripture, Ephesians 4.18. And that's another one I didn't write down the version. I think it's amplified. It's amplified. Yes, this is it. Their moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning is beclouded. They are alienated, estranged, self-banished from the life of God with no share in it. This is because of the ignorance, the want of knowledge and perception, the willful blindness that is deep-seated in them due to their hardness of heart, to the insensitive of their moral nature. This is what begins to happen to your heart over time. And we're going to look at some traits of hearts. But this is what happens. We don't start off like that. Right? We don't start off like that. Even children, when they're, when they're born, you know, they're, the, the ideology is that they come pure. But then by two, they don't want to share. They have different temperaments that come with them. But that's why we have parents. Because parents, the responsibility is to grow their strengths and root out or taper their weakness. Because if you allow it to grow with them, you know, I had this woman sitting to me the other day, one of my clients, she goes, well, I just thought they were going to outgrow it. I'm like, no would be nice, wouldn't it? They do not outgrow it. It just morphs into something else. But it's the same seed. So we're going to look at the first one is a poisoned heart. And what is a poisoned heart? It's a heart that's filled with bitterness, offense, envy, and jealousy which all have their root in hatred. So we'll look at First Chronicles 15, 29 as an example for... And I thought this was also very interesting because when I used to look at this scripture, I always used to think that she was just jealous or envious because he was dancing and he was playing and there was a lot of women around. But I, I went, kept going back over it. And this is something that we see a lot of. And it says, and as it came to pass, as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the city of David. So David just didn't come in dancing, you know, and rejoicing by himself. He came in with the Lord. He came in representing God. He came in representing holiness, righteousness. But yet, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looking out of a window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. That was his wife. She, other verses said she has hatred towards him. I mean, it's hard to believe that a wife could have that hatred towards her husband, but I've seen it. I do. So it's a poisoned heart. Bitterness is also part of that one. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny it to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from the heaven but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every 
evil practice. Every evil practice. Bitterness and envy are dangerous. They are very, very dangerous. I've had both. So I was thinking about envy is something I struggle with a lot growing up. And I was meditating today and praying, and I was like, Lord, how did I even get like that? Because I was a loving child, you know? And I, he brought me back to, and this is one going back to a seed again. He brought me back to my grandmother. My grandmother was a loving woman, very, very kind. But I remember she used to teach us that everything had to be fair. So if she bought, if it was my birthday, everybody got a gift. If it was my cousin's birthday, everybody got a gift. And I remember like thinking, That's, this is great. Because even when it's not my birthday, I'm going to get a present, right? So I, I actually love the concept. I was like, this is really good. I love this. And, and then I started to think as I was growing up, you know, I carried that belief system into everything. So if we don't all have the same thing, then that's not fair. Or if I don't have what you have, then I'm missing out. This is not fair. And I never realized it, but I believe what God was showing me, that that's where it started. It was a seed, once again, a seed. And it was harmless to her. She was just trying to be fair to everybody. But one, it's not the word of God. It's not true. Because guess what? Everything's not fair. I don't know if everybody's realized that or not, but everything is not fair, okay? It's, we're not all going to be equal. We're not all going to be privy to the same things. It's not true. But I believed it. So I'm saying that to say, you know, we had an issue with my granddaughter the other day, and... She has a very soft heart, but she's dealing with a lot of stuff at school, bullying and stuff like that. And I was watching my daughter work with her, and I felt kind of led to get involved because I knew that she was doing the right thing from where she was coming from, but it wasn't the Word of God. And oftentimes, we can be emotional and we can bypass the word and try to fix a problem or do things in our own understanding. But yet we don't realize we are sowing a seed. She didn't mean to, but I saw that she could have potentially sowed a seed that was going to affect my granddaughter much later in life. But the seed she was trying to sow was to protect her. But it's not God's word. It's not the truth. So bitterness, envy and jealousy, Proverbs 14, 30. A calm, and this is Amplified Version, a calm and undisturbed mind and heart are the life and health of the body, but envy, jealousy, and wrath are rottenness to the bones. And if you ever get around people who are envious and jealous, they have, to look at the fruits of it, they have a hard time celebrating other people. Very hard time. Or they'll be able to pick out what other people do and say. They are able to focus on their negative traits instead of their positive. A lot of times it can be very legitimate because it could be true about that person in the flesh. But these are things to look for. And if you have it, you want to purge it. Offense. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 to 10, the NLT version. I love this one. It says, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Like, that's the part I like. Who really knows how bad it is? 
But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. That's very heavy. We're not going to go to that one right now, but my point is, because that's a heavy, heavy one. Um, my point is, how many times do we do things? It's not that bad. It's not really that bad. But the thing is, you don't even know how bad it is. That's the thing, because your heart's deceitful. You don't know. You're only going to know if you go and find out what the Lord is saying. You need the mirror to find out how, how bad is this really. Amen? Okay, we'll do one more and then I, I'm not going to have time to get through the outline. But I want to go to the next one, which is a hardened heart. Because I think this is one that a lot of people deal with. I can remember because a hardened heart is pride and stubbornness. And they're at the root of this. It's called a proud heart. I still will never forget when we used to have our women's prayer meetings with mama. That was, goodness, how many years? 20? 18, 20 years ago. And I can remember I used to sit in them and I used to be like, I am not prideful. Like, <laughs> I am the least prideful person ever. Um, because I used to think pride was only about boasting. And even in saying that I'm not prideful, it's kind of bo it's boasting. <laughs> but I really didn't get it. I did not get it. I never thought that that was me, right? And um, it took years, actually, before I think we probably did a series on it, something I'm like, oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Um, there's a lot of different areas with pride, a lot of different areas. I'm not going to go through all the scriptures because I actually don't have the time, um, but I can give them to you. I'll read just one or two. Proverbs 18, 12, King James. It says, before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Another one is Proverbs 21, 4. It says, eyes lifted high and a proud heart. This is the NLV. I like the version is sin and is the lamp of the sinful. So basically, I think you could say he's the stamp. It's the mark. You know, when people are like, you know, like a kind of a visual, like they're up here, like they just don't, yeah. Amen. So there's so much more that we're going to go through. I don't have time tonight, but I do want to say one thing because I really believe God was showing me something today. So when I was finished studying and pulling the notes together, um, I put my phone down. And this has only happened to me once or twice before. That's why I know it was him. And all of a sudden, this sermon just came on out of nowhere. I never heard it in my life. Um, it is someone I listen to on a regular, but it just came up out of nowhere. And I looked down at it, and it was halfway finished. So I have no idea. Anyway. She was talking about repentance. She was literally giving a recap of everything we've gone through in the last 60 days. Yeah, it was, it was well. Because I was like, okay. So I stopped doing what I was doing. And I just said, okay, I want to listen to this later. So I stopped it and put my phone away and closed it up. I get in the car, turn my car on, and there it is again. And I was like, okay, I'm listening. I'll stop. I'm listening. And I started to listen. And she literally, I mean, not taught this sermon, but she said a, a lot of stuff. And then she said, she was talking about Moses and how, you know, all the things Moses was doing that was not lining up to the word of God or, or, or the commandment of the Lord. But she said something that just really jumped out at me. She goes, he's not really looking for your skills because Moses was called to speak and yet stammered. Um, he's not really looking for what you know. He's not looking for anything, but what he's looking for is a pure heart that he can build on. And then the scripture came to me with Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. 
that's all he's looking for. And I know Papa said something on Sunday. He mentioned a minister, a preacher pastor. And then I started to think about some other pastors and how they moved. And I was like, you do wonder, what is it about them? Just like, what is it, what was it about David? He came from brothers who seemed to be proud and arrogant, yet he was a, a youngster. And I was thinking, what were you doing out in the fields with the bear and the sheep? And what were you doing out there? Well, you were probably away from corrupt and vile communication. You probably were keeping yourself in the shadow of the Almighty. You were secluded, set apart. But yet his many, many mistakes and all the things he did wrong, God said. It was his heart. And I was just blessed by that tonight. I was like, Lord, this is what you're looking for? All this knowledge and revelation and all these antics that we may have gathered over the years and stuff, it's like, you just want a heart. Amen. So let's just say, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your continued love patience and kindness towards us oh god father we commit ourselves and we commit our hearts to you fully lord have your way have your will in jesus name amen